Hey guys, welcome back to The Wandering Wind. I know I haven't been on in a minute, um, mainly because I've been kind of uh, under the weather. Uh, weather here has been kind of iffy off and on, mainly because of the um, change of the seasons, really. And so it's getting to the point where sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it can be a bit much. Um, I know lately it's just been a matter of the... <clears throat> Air and temperature changes have made my, my sinuses just act up something fierce. But then it's also just been kind of rough over the past few weeks anyway because of recent events. Um, if you guys aren't aware, I am from Ohio. So um, if you weren't aware, back on February 3rd, there was a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, or I or Palestine. They keep calling it Palestine on the news. I'm I'm in I'm I'm inclined to believe them just because, you know, a lot of people have to go through, you know, training to be able to say words right. <laughs> but he's Palestine. And um there were a total of what, like seven or eight different hazardous materials that were spilled in the area and also were burned and released into the atmosphere. And so I noticed like about a week afterwards, the air quality just started to drop. So it's been kind of hard. But I wanted to actually talk about that because um, over the weekend, officials um, have said that the air quality in the town is normal, you know, despite the ongoing fears, which is going to happen for a while. But on 25th, on the February, on February 25th, the EPA said it was ordering a temporary halt on shipments of the contaminated waste away from the site. Um, according to Deborah Shore, the regional administrator of the EPA, is, she said it was to allow officials to assure, ensure that all waste is disposed of in a safe and lawful manner at approved facilities. Um, they supposedly planned to begin shipping liquid waste to an underground injection well, which I'm not sure exactly how safe that is, but okay. As well as having solid waste going to an incinerator, which again, really? We're burning again? We're burning again. Okay, all right, we're burning again. But, you know, this calls into question a lot of our, um, you know, recent legislation when it comes to um, just toxic toxic materials and their um, containment, storage, and transportation. I'm, I remind, I'm reminded of a few different instances where in like shipping ports or whatever, there has been like, um, what was that one big um, explosion in China or whatever? China warehouse house h o u s e explosion or something Tianjin um okay so it was um ammonium nitrate in this case and then again in another chemical blast um Chemical explosion yeah, so there have been several of these. there's been um port meshes or netches chemical explosion. there was the one in twenty fifteen in um Tianjin, China. there was another I think in twenty sixteen. Needless to say, there have been a whole lot of um, issues with containing hazardous materials in ways that do not lead to either um, them exploding or them burning. Um, this latest incident in East Palestine, or at East Palestine, sorry, um, was supposedly a controlled burn to um, prevent the environment from getting polluted from the chemicals that were leaking out of the, or or rather prevent an explosion because they were detecting 
that one of the cars that was containing said materials was starting to heat up and starting to experience what they called a thermal event or whatever. And so they control burned the chemicals in order to be able to uh, um, deal with them. The other thing is, you know, this, you know, on the one hand, it, it's concerning that we don't yet know exactly how to safely contain or transport or even store some of these materials in certain cases where eventually something happens and the whole thing goes up. But then we have, right afterwards, we have Governor Mike DeWine receiving a call from the President of the United States is saying, who, and he says, we will give you everything you need. Just say the word. And DeWine says, well, your people are already here. We don't need anything. And I don't see the need. When in reality, we could have gotten a whole lot more help than what we were already getting. Yes, there were EPA officials there. But there could have easily been a deployment of, I don't know, say FEMA, you know, Federal Emergency Management Agency, you know, to the area to kind of help with the cleanup effort, you know, because FEMA has hazmat suits, they have the containment stuff, they have everything that they need in order to do this kind of stuff because they've had to do it before and they're probably going to have to do it again considering our track record with a lot of these things. Not to mention, you know, the company that, um, the, the, <laughs> the company that is, I guess, responsible for this has yet to really, um, I guess, answer a lot of the um, ac accusations leveled against them when it comes to, you know, all these things and what was done or not done when in regards to, you know, containing it or addressing it once it happened. And so, I mean, personally for me, I already have respiratory issues. I don't like to not let, I don't like to not have our air and water and everything else polluted to the point to where we can't survive. But the other thing is, I love our planet. I want to keep our planet as healthy as possible for the foreseeable future. That's why I am for whatever we can do to create renewable energy, even if it's nuclear. Heck, nuclear is safe if it's used right. You know, I mean, these chemicals are safe. If they're safe, if they're transported right and they're used right and they're stored right, you know, but the thing is we don't have a lot of companies that are... I, I don't want to. I don't want to say that they're not using their 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 everyday logic or their common sense, but you know, in a way, it kind of seems like they aren't. They're not using common sense. They're doing things that that cut cut corners in order to increase profit in a lot of cases, and that is cause for concern. It really is. Now, am I saying that we have to have a completely perfect system? No, but we should at least have something that we can trust is not going to completely blow up in our face, pun not intended, at the first sign of trouble, you know? <laughs> it's just that simple. You'd think by now, we're in 2023, right? You'd think by now we'd have things in place to where that wouldn't happen as often as it actually does. But, you know, and, and I know I'm skipping over a lot of the minute, minute details. I know I'm skipping over the... the um you know, culpability of the company and also um, local officials and stuff like that. It really doesn't matter. I just want us to come together and come to a common conclusion that we need to actually make things happen to where it will support and induce proper procedure to help contain incidents like this. Because honestly, I've seen a whole lot of news articles for U.S. news in the last couple of years dealing with stuff like this, you know, like um, derailments. You know, the company that has that that was running this particular train that derailed, they've had more derailments from their company than a lot of the other companies that are in the same area as they are, and they're one of the biggest 
rail companies in, you know, the eastern part of the United States, you know, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Florida, you know, all of these places, they mainly serve the eastern seaboard of the United States. And so, you know, if something goes wrong and it's a, a train derailment or something, you, you can bet your tail. It's probably these folks. Um, Actually, what was the name of the rail company? Let me look it up. East Palestine Derailment Company. Uh, okay. Norfolk, Norfolk Southern. Okay, so these people are just, mm, I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading into it more than there is. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm a bit biased because I live here. And so the fact that I'm possibly breathing air that's even just a little bit less safe than normal is still a bit of a, or whatever, you know, because that stuff doesn't just dissipate into the air immediately. It takes a while. It hangs a bit. It hangs around a bit. In fact, you know, when I was looking at the satellite imagery or whatever of the big plume from that burn, I'm like, yeah, that ain't going to go away anytime soon. And it didn't. And there was, there was video from there where, you know, these aren't storm clouds. They're the, they're the, they're the smoke clouds from all the all the chemicals that they burned, you know, yada, yada. And uh, thank you, thank you, Norfolk Southern. But, you know, at the end of the day, we just need to do our little part to make our world a little bit safer and a little bit less dirty. And whether that's, you know, using less electricity, using less water, um, trying to recycle as much as we can, although these days it's even harder than ever to be able to figure out how. Because, you know, sometimes regulations change and sometimes getting a hold of a bin can be a bit much. But, <laughs> you know, I digress. It's just a bit much sometimes. But I believe we'll be okay. I believe we'll be all right. I do. And so thank you guys so very much for watching, sharing, subscribing, liking, commenting. I hope to get a video or two from my Genshin gameplay up in the next couple of days. I'm going to try and rush through um, getting up all the videos that I have recorded so far so I can get back to like daily recording and then uploading that evening or something rather than hoping that I can edit and, and you know, publish, you know, 10 or 12 videos. <laughs> That's about what I got. So, yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, commenting. And donating. I would love for you to um, share a donation with me if you'd like. If you don't, that's fine. You know, as always, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.